ask me for a name. So I'm going to say output value loop. should be able 
to set my units labels to those values. So it says I need a super in it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't forget line 27 right here. So in Swift, you have to you have to actually execute the code that's in the super class. So you actually have to through that the whole hierarchy it's going to bounce its way up and, and execute every initializer all the way up the hierarchy. So this is actually what what this should look like. Sorry. This is technically a state because if you hit Fahrenheit to Celsius, you'll, you'll get all those populated, but then as soon as you start typing again, it, it technically it should be resetting itself to zero and the two question marks. That's right. That's another behavior that we want that we actually didn't detail, which is super important. After I hit convert, what do I want to have to happen with the state of that input value? If I type 212 Fahrenheit to Celsius, am I done? as a user? Or do I want to keep adding digits to the end of 212? It sounds a little bit odd to do the latter, right? Because the calculator doesn't behave that way. If you do a calculation 1 plus 1 and you hit equals and start typing, it's not going to start tacking digits onto the end of the number 2, right? You're going to go into this other state that we call it, which is, which is if I type another, if I convert something and then I start typing again, I'll start to create a new input for myself. So how do we keep track of that? Set a new property. We can set a new property. Yeah. So maybe the, maybe it's a Boolean property that's like you know clear input at next button press or something like something super descriptive that tells me what state that I'm in. And then I'll set that property right after I hit one of these conversion buttons and set that to true. And then I'll check for that later. And so I understand that I'm not appending anymore. I first have to make it, I have to clear it, and then start pushing digits onto the end of that thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, your tasks for the next 24 minutes are to update the units here, update the unit using the properties that we just set on my converter. And then you can do one of two things. You can <coughs> handle that input behavior with a Boolean property or whatnot. Or we can hook up another one of these buttons to do a different conversion for yourself. Which involves creating another extended class so that
in the conversion class that we created before. some units into your, into your labels. Reference those labels, write the units.
is that this notion of clearing an input value, that should be a notion that is independent of the way that I did it. This is what I'm doing. This is how I'm doing it. Does it make sense? What I'm doing is clearing the input value. That kind of makes sense to even a user if we, if we explain them what an input was and what a value was. But self.input value equals empty string. Like, if I showed you that line, you'd, have, you'd, you'd pretty much have no idea what I was doing. You'd have no idea that that was like, changing a value in, in, in a label or anything like that, um, or what it was intended to mean. But because I can use the class structure, I can use methods in a function to start to describe in English what I'm, what I'm doing, or describe a, a language closer to English what I'm doing. And then, if something changes, say, you know, you're, you're, you're doing some UI code and you have a partner who's doing more of the conversion code, and something happens where your workflow changes. This notion of, um, say, I want to do live updates as I'm typing. Like, instead, my workflow could have been, I pick a conversion, and then I start typing a number, and then every time I type, I convert. Right? So as I'm typing 212, I type 2 and I get negative whatever, I type 1 and it's 21 degrees Fahrenheit and then I instantly get you know, negative 4 or whatever it is. And then I type 2 again and then I get 100. Right? It's a different type of flow. That different type of flow may very well require a different implementation under the hood. So clear input value might mean something totally different. Maybe I'm keeping track instead of a string, I'm keeping track of a double, like you suggested before. If I'm doing that, then self.input value was empty string doesn't apply anymore. I'm using a completely different type. So clearing the input value might mean set this to zero and then set my app back to a state where I'm accepting an early input, like a, a, an initial input. So maybe I have another Boolean that talks about what state my interface is in. Another Boolean that describes like what behavior should come next. Like it could be all of those little gears and things could be different. It's almost like swapping out a digital watch, like a digital watch for a mechanical watch or a mechanical for a digital, right? The watch face stays the same, but behind I could be swapping out how that, what that mechanism is like entirely, and you wouldn't even know from the outside.